Okay, so we have our Hornby Select connected to our decoder circuit that we developed. This decodes the DC signal from there, then it drives the servo here, which then drives the signal. And there's the servo pulse width that we generate from here. So let's just change our signal position. And now you can see the pulse width change and the servo move the signal. Go the other way. And in this video, we're going to look at what codes are sent out and what we need to decode to get this to work, including addressing. We can address um, and change the address of our little decoder. Right, okay, so we have the Hornby Select. I've got it connected to this terminal block here. Um, I've got two loops here so I can see the DCC signal coming out. On the uh, supply to the Hornby Select, I've picked up a ground for the oscilloscope, or what should I say, the 0 volts rail, because the oscilloscope will ground the Hornby Select now because the supply to this is floating. And we can see, well, we can we can almost see, <laughs> there's uh, digital signals going on here. The National Model Railway Association specifies that the signals should be plus or minus 15 volts around the North Volt Rail. Uh, how, how this is actually achieved is it's like with this Hornby Select, and also um, in the future we're going to use this H-Bridge motor driver to do to control things as well. Um, is they actually switch both rails, so one rail goes positive, the other rail goes negative, and when the servos decode it, it appears to be like plus or minus fifteen volts when it goes through the rectifier, etc. So let's just have a quick look at the waveform. Um, I'm going to do a single shot on the scope to capture it. Then I'm going to open it up. Um, this ringing, not sure what the ring is about. We get it with the Hornby Select, but we don't get it on the DC motor, uh, well, the H bridge motor circuit, which I'll show in a minute. Um, but you can see that um, one side of the DC signal goes up whilst the other side goes down. And if I just adjust, so I put the cursor on that one and the lower cursor on that one, I sort of get the voltage. And Interestingly, the voltage is 15 volts, which is what you'd expect. Um, but the 15 volts would be respect to the, the other voltage on the other side. So this is where we get our plus or minus 15 volts. If um, we now go across to see the output from this unit, which is also connected to the Hornby Select DCC output through an opto isolator, and this actually drives the rails. We'll have a look at that side and see what's going on there. Now, maybe it's a good Secondary 
Right, we've connected up our model railway now. This is the output, which is going, sorry, this is the input. And the output is going through this terminal block, through this loop of wire onto the track. So I should now control the train, which I can do from here. So this controls the DC signal, which goes through an optocoupler, and then is, goes out through this H-bridge motor controller. So it's just mimicking what the Hornby Select is doing. So in theory, if I do that, I've got the right direction to help. You should see this pass around the back. So this is this running, the train, instead of the Hornby Select Direct. So let's have a look at the signals here. I'm going to do a single, a single shot. Let's open up. Um, let's just do some measurement. What I'm going to do is see what the voltage value is. And this is about, well, it's about 11 and a half volts, not the 15. That's because I've actually got a 12 volt power supply <laughs> supply in this unit. Um, so it's a lower voltage, so we can expect that. But interestingly, it's easier to see the, the, the waveforms that come out. So if I just shift along. And these will be encoded. So let's get the train to move. I'll just do another single shot. Hang on, let's just get the frequency up a bit. I'll stop the train. If we carefully open this up, and if we move along, this wide pulse is a zero bit. So you get a high and a low. In fact, let's just move these out of the way a bit. Let's get them separated. So all the, the other rail is the inversion of the other rail. <laughs> so they're going backwards and forwards. So let's let's just um, move along. See if we can see. So that's the what that. See, we got a a wide mark space ratio on the waveform here and then a smaller one here and if I can measure let's measure the time according to this it's 58 microseconds well bearing in mind that's the pulse width for a one in a minute, we'll go and look at the um, actual specification set by the National Model Railway Association. The National Model Railway Association website have Um, let's go and find what zero is. The pulse width of a zero. I'm going to just toggle around the cursors a minute. Here we go. And according to my scope, it's about 102 microseconds. And don't forget, there's a tolerance in how well I actually measure this. So we'll compare these results with the specification set by the National Model Railway Association.
So I've just gone away and had a quick look at the uh, specification for the pulse widths. And a 1 is represented by 58 microseconds, is what we got. And a 0 is represented by 100 microseconds. And if we quickly move along, we can see that there's 1s and zeros being sent. This signal is then uh, rect is, is rectified in the train, smoothed, and then the motor is driven by a switching circuit, which um, is connected to a decoder, which decodes this signal. What we did is um, we read the specs and got lost. <laughs> I just found it a little bit difficult to follow. So we decided to decode this and we built a little circuit that will measure the width of these pulses and try and determine what their, mean, what their meaning is. And eventually we made the circuit, which is shown here, and it basically used the PIC18F25Q10 to actually measure the pulse whips as they came through using a function which is um, called the gate interval function which allows it to measure the transition on two edges and the time period. From that we could determine whether there's a naught or a one um, and then we decoded this or preamble that is specified and then collected 8 bits of data, including um, stop start bits within the whole data train, and then sent it out through to a COM port on the laptop. And we used the Arduino um, COM port reader to display the results. Okay, we've reprogrammed our servo controller decoder, which is here. And there's also an RS232 output that runs into our laptop. And we use the Arduino serial monitor. We'll show you that in a minute. But what we've done is the function light here, when we've got a train address 3, the function light effectively switches on what is the um, standard for the headlight so it's a basic headlight so if I press that Hornby select says on and the LED comes on press it again Hornby, F, Hornby select says off and the LED goes off so on off so we are decoding the address coming out of this for the headlamp but not only that, with this serial data bus, we are running up to our laptop. OK, we're now just looking at the laptop and scrolling through the serial data that's been decoded from the DCC signal. And uh, as we just seen, we controlled the LED on our little interface board. So now I'm going to press the Hornby Select function button again and we should see the data change. Uh, we have address equals 03 which is the train address and the first data byte D1 shown as 80 hex. If I press the function button comes through as 90 hex. So that's what our little board picks up. It picks up that change in address. I'll go back to switching the LED off. It goes back to 80 hex. You can see it slowly scrolls through. So the data is streaming out 
uh, a very slow rate. Of course, there's other lots of other data being uh, encoded on the DC signal, like the train speed, etc. But we filtered out that um, headlight function on the horn we select. Switch the light on. Switch the light off. I did the video regularly.